Well, I think we're on now. I think we're live, or at least we will be in a minute. Hey, can you hear me? I hope you can. Hello, hello. Hello, Warren, me, Julie, Bill, Buddy, Michael, Olive, or Bill. <laughs> and Karen, maybe. <laughs> and Jalen. Good Tom Parks. You. you guys know everything <coughs> is about Google Photos, right? <laughs> Actually, I'm putting a little bit of a different spin on it today, so... Even if you've seen all our stuff, today should be good. Do you hear me? Yeah, Thank we hear you. John. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> it's always nice to know. They, and they, they understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, video it should be the standby. Ron, that is our video. <laughs> all right. All right, it's 2 o'clock. You ready? I uh, never. <laughs> but I'm... Um, but... Go ahead. <laughs> oh my. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 191 of What Does This Button Do? He still says no video. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, I'm sure it's there. Yeah, it's there. You'll know, get there. I'm sure it will. Okay, thank you, Michael. <laughs> You're such a guy. All right, where am I? Where is my... I've lost something here. That's there it is. I lost. It's an educational show about smartphones and technology with us geeks on tour. Today's beginner's lesson is what is Google Photos and how do I use it? But Chris has a quick tip first. Will this you? is this is my favorite thing of <laughs> yeah. I have lots of favorite <laughs> things, right? But this really is my favorite thing. So Here's a, here's a little video about using Google Photos for making your travel albums. Hi, this is Chris Cool with Geeks on Tour, and I want to show you the quick and easy way to use Google Photos to keep your travel albums so that you are all done by the time you get home. Don't be like people who take a one-week trip and say they took so many pictures it's going to take them two weeks once they get home to organize it. No, let me show you how. So first of all, we're using Google Photos. You recognize that icon, I hope. For purposes of this video, I'm going to take you back to December 2015 when my husband and I took a trip to Cuba. A very special trip. And I can just scroll right back there. So the first day of our trip was December 4, 2015. And here we are taking a selfie at the airport right away what I'm gonna do is start an album. What you, you just swipe up on the photo and tap on add to album and new album. Give it a name and tap the check mark. I now have an album started and as I take more pictures so remember, I'm pretending that we're just going on this trip right now. Got it? <laughs> and I'm taking pictures all day. And I say, oh, I so like these pictures of the old cars. So I tap one. I say, gee, that looks pretty good. I want to add that to the album. Swipe up, add to album, and it will be in your recent 2015 Cuba trip. Now notice I have a lot of pictures of the old cars. Some people would say delete all the ones that you don't want to keep and then what you're left with is the good ones. But I say I can't delete any of these. These are all great. But for purposes of my album, I'm just going to choose one or two. Now here's one of my very, I really, really like this one, a red car. Swipe up. Add to album, Cuba trip. Now realize you can be doing this as you're on the trip. You take a picture, you say that's a great one, you add it to the album, done. Now I'm not saying you should never delete. I mean, this picture is obviously a mistake. I can just tap the trash can and it will be removed from my Google account and from the device that took the picture. 
But since Google gives me free unlimited storage, no reason to delete if I don't need to. You can also add videos to your album. I love this one. Swipe up, add to album, 2015 Cuba trip. And then go back to your library. If you see several you want, you can select them. Touch and hold, select another one, select another one, tap the plus and add to 2015 Cuba trip. Now at this point in the trip we took a bus to from Havana to the Bay of Pigs and I want that picture and that picture and then we have to have some picture of food, right? Plus and Cuba trip. But I want some description in my album. So let's go take a look at the album now. Go to albums and 2015 Cuba trip and there's just a bunch of pictures. Right at this point I want a map and some text telling the story of our trip. To do that you tap the three dots, edit album and map and done. You can drag it into place, touch and hold until it kind of gets attached to your finger and move down to where you want it to be and let go. Now I also want to add some text and check mark and check mark on the whole album. Now you will need Wi-Fi in order to do this while you're on the trip and there wasn't much in Cuba but pretty much every day we had some place where there was Wi-Fi which would mean our photos were automatically uploaded and we could play with making our albums at any time while you're on the bus or waiting for dinner no problem. And if you chose to share your album while still on your trip your family and friends see your photos as you add them and by the time you're home, it's all done. Cool. Excellent. So I hope you like that. It does really drive me nuts when I hear people say that they have all these photos of their travelers, of their travels, and one of these days <laughs> they'll get around to organizing them and putting them in a way that they can share them with friends. I'll bet you some of you in our live audience right now did follow us when we went to Italy and did follow us when we went to New Zealand because we started an album on day one and shared it and people could join and then they would see the photos as we traveled day by day. And really, when we got home, it was done. But since I hadn't deleted anything, if I did decide later, sometimes even years later, to add a different photo to the album, I can because I haven't deleted it. I love travel albums. Yes, you do. Photos. We all do. <laughs> All right. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Jim here together with Chris, my wife. We are Geeks on Tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? <laughs> do you have questions about your iPad or your Android phone? And how do you learn about these amazing devices? Well, we are geeks who teach, and we think the best way to learn is in bite-sized pieces on a regular basis. So that's why we have this YouTube show where we pick a topic to do with something with smartphones or technology and we give a live show every week. And we also have lots of tutorial videos and courses and documentation and they're all collected on our website geeksontour.com. All right, so Chris, where are we now? Day 60 wow. of being home. Yeah, we're uh, isolating with the iguanas. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so I want to remind our premium members that we have a backstage pass. That right after this show, or around 3 o'clock, I will open up a, uh, a meeting. It's a Zoom meeting. And you'll sh members, premium members, paid members, should get the link from an email. If you didn't see that email, you can also go to our website, geeksontour.com, and the member login menu item and scroll down, you'll find that link, right? Yep. 
and we want to say hi to our live viewers. We got a bunch of people in there. Who you got there, Chris? Yeah, <laughs> says ninety-seven. Uh, hi, Ron. He's all, Ron Brown. Ron was always first. the first first one here. Almost always. Got to give props to Ron and Huey. Good to see you and Honey Bert, Catherine Cronforst. Yeah, you guys are all here. And Scotland, Ron Whalen, hello. Michael Daniels, love seeing you every time. Uh-oh. And... <laughs> I forgot one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's so nice of you to stop by. All right. Goal. So what we're going to do today is concepts. You know, if you understand the concept, you can figure out how to do the task. But if you've just been given step by step to the task, then if those steps change, you won't be able to figure it out. So we are all about teaching concepts. And there's four, we're, we're taking a bird's eye view today. Gathering all your photos, videos from every camera and disc exploring your photos once they're all gathered into your Google Photos account, editing, Just we're just going to do a little bit of editing just to show the concept once again and that you can edit any of your Google Photos from any connected device. And making albums, we've already dealt with a little bit. We'll have a few more things to say. But I love this. The only thing constant in life, uh, no, in Google, is change. <laughs> So it's best not to memorize the menus in the keystrokes because I guarantee you they are going to change. Terminology. This is one that I just want to make sure you understand how I am using the words download and upload. You see, because Google Photos is stored in the cloud. Now, what's the cloud? It's just the internet. But imagine that it is up above the earth in the clouds. And that helps with the terminology. If something is on the device in front of you and you want it in the cloud, on the internet, you are going to upload it. If it's already in the cloud, in the internet, on the web, and you want it on your device or on your computer in front of you, then you're going to download it. So that's how I use these words. I want people to realize that Google Photos is not just a new tool for doing the same old photo organizing tasks we've always done. It's a paradigm shift and you really have to switch your head. I answer so many questions from people who want to know how to do something in Google Photos that they've been doing on their computer forever. And it just doesn't work that way. This is a new way of organizing your photos. The old way is with folders on a computer. With folders, one picture can only be in one folder because it's a physical storage location. One picture goes into one folder. And you have to have your computer if you want to view your library of photos. With Google Photos, this is the new way your photos go to the cloud in just one infinite stream of photos and videos. And videos. In the cloud, in, then the stream is arranged by date. That's, also, that's called your library. I sometimes refer to it as your timeline, but it's all your photos in one place. And with that organization, one picture can be in many different albums. So the, the little image there is a, a dolphin in the water. And that one picture can be put in an album with fish. <laughs> Another album, although a dolphin isn't a fish, is it? No, it's a mammal. <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, sea, and sea creatures, how's that? It could also be put into an album for ocean. It could also be put in an album for summer 2010 when you, when you took the picture. Albums are virtual groupings as opposed to physical storage locations. One picture can be in many different albums and you don't need your computer. Any connected device 
can see your entire library of photos on the web. You know, until you experience that, you just don't realize the power. I have my entire life's photos in my hand on this phone, or if I lose this phone, I have the enti my entire life's photos on this phone. If I do have a computer, I can look at them there too. So I want to show, to explain to you what the purpose of Google Photos. So this, this is actually the mission statement of the Google Photos team at Google. One home for all your photos and videos, organized and brought to life so that you can share and save what matters. So that's kind of three pieces, right? One home, we already talked about that, brought to life, organized and brought to life, Notice it didn't say organizable. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do not give us any tools really for doing the organizing ourselves. They are organized according to the way Google wants to organize them. And brought to life, meaning it's easy to go back and find and remember the times of your life. Now that little private, I stuck that in there now, why did they not have the word private in their mission statement? Is it because it was an afterthought? You know, a lot of people think if it's in the cloud, then anybody can see it. So that's why I want to make sure you realize this is private. But the Google Photos team, I think they just so understand that this is private that it just didn't need to be said. Think about your Gmail. You know, that's another service provided by Google. Do you have to be told that your Gmail is private for your eyes only? No, it's, it's obvious. Well, that is the case with Google Photos as well. It is for your eyes only, but you can share whatever you want and share it easily. So one home for all your photos and videos. If you take photos with your phone, all you have to do is install Google Photos, turn on the setting for backup and sync, and now boom, anytime you're connected to Wi-Fi, your pictures are going up to the cloud. Same thing with a tablet or another phone. Now what if you have a, a camera? Well, depending on the camera, you know, old cameras, you're going to have to take out the little card. If you can get it out. If you can get it out. <laughs> well, you know, there's an SD card in here. So you have to take out that SD card, put it into your computer, and then use the techniques for uploading from the computer. However, if you have a new camera, we, we don't. So I haven't actually done this, but I understand that all new cameras for the last couple of years are Wi-Fi enabled. Well, actually, my Samsung camera did have Wi-Fi capability. So that was one camera that, and that's old, not too old, but it, it's, it's one camera that had that capability. But that actually Wasn't, was like a tablet. It was more like a tablet. Yeah, right? and it just it connected to the internet and uploaded from there. The camera, what she's talking the, about is like digital SLRs or right. even point and shoots. All the new ones do that. And what you can do, you don't even need internet. What you do with those cameras is you set, it, set the Wi-Fi up so that when you take a picture with the camera, it Wi-Fi transfers to the phone. Once it's on the phone, Google Photos sees it. So it's as if you took it with the phone, but you actually took it with the camera. So that's, that's if you have a new camera, how you get those to Google Photos is Wi-Fi to a phone. And then thumb drives, you know, you may have photo, <laughs> <laughs> photo, <laughs> photos on thumb drives and external hard drives and maybe even CDs. All of these things require being attached to a computer and then the techniques for uploading to a computer are all pretty much the same. And we have a video okay. on one way. There's several different ways, but video cool. 624. 
Hi, this is Chris Gould with Geeks on Tour, and this tutorial video is about copying old photos from a CD or DVD onto your Google Photos library. The first thing is if your computer doesn't have a DVD drive, you're going to have to get an external USB drive. This is what I'm talking about right here, an external CD DVD that plugs into your USB and this is it's only $30. So I am going to do that. I have an old CD with photos on it and it is plugged into my computer and I'm going to load it up. Now something might pop up as soon as the DVD spins up, but I don't want to do any of this. I want to manually copy photos from the CD, DVD, to my Google Photos. So I'm going to cancel that. Now I open up my files and folders, and I want to look at this PC, and it's this right here, the DVD drive and I have a folder on this old, this is old, from 2000. I was so excited to find these pictures. New Year's 2000. I have several items in disc one and more photos in disc two. So how do I get them to my Google Photos? Open a browser with your Google Photos library. So this is my whole library and then open up the file. I'm going to do disk one first. And all I have to do, I'm going to use the drag and drop method. There are other methods, but drag and drop, if you can, if you understand it, is so easy. So in the background is my Google Photos library on my web browser. In the foreground are the files that are on the DVD. And I just select them all. I can do that with a control A. And I drag them over. You should see that little plus copy and when you let, it says drop files anywhere to upload. They are uploading. When it's done, it offers to add them to an album and I do want to do that. So add to album, new album, and 2000 New Year's Eve and check mark. Now there's a really cool thing. If I go back, I remember I have another disc worth. I have a disc too and I can drag them right into the open album. So I'm going to do a control A to select them all and then just drag right into this album and let go. And notice it doesn't offer to add them to an album because I already did that. So there are there is Jim and me on New Year's Day Y2K and it's and it's all in the New Year's Eve album. Very cool. Y2K. You remember that? That was just yesterday, right? <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Amazing. I noticed one question I would like to yeah, answer ahead. now. Uh, Bridget Oh, it says, Google Photos is free, right? If so, then it could go away at any time, correct? No. It is free, yes. It is free. It is free. But is it going away? But it is the most popular app Google has ever had. There are over a billion users. So, and, so that's number one is so many people depend on. Now I know Google has killed off things that have a lot of people using it before, but number two is they are figuring out how to monetize it. So it is free if you choose the 
file size called high quality, meaning Google compresses your photos and videos a little bit. It is high quality. I think it's great. It's what I recommend. However, some people do want the original size photos stored, in which case they need to pay for more than the 15 gigabytes of free storage. Number two, Google is really getting good at making you photo books and prints and canvas wall photo prints, and they charge for that. So they are figuring out how to make Google Photos be sustainable monetarily. Even if Google Photos did go away, Google Photos has only been around since 2015. I have been storing my photos in Google's in my Google account in the cloud since 2003 when it was Picasa web albums. So the product may change, but your storage area, I, I still believe will always be there. Picasa went away, but that was right. But the Picasa web album, the photos that I uploaded to Picasa web albums are still there. Okay. Next in the mission statement is organized and brought to life. So what do they mean by your photos are organized? Number one, they're sorted by date. That giant stream of photos is in order by date. Whenever you take a picture with a phone or with a digital camera, it gets date stamped when it was taken. As long as that camera has the right date set. <laughs> true, true. If, if you're using a regular old camera and it has a wrong date set on it, <laughs> then your pictures are gonna have that date. It's date taken. Now, if per chance you upload a photo that has no date taken, you know, the, an old camera or a scan or something like that, then it will get in order of date uploaded. In addition to date order, so that that's it as far as physical organization, it's in date order. But then you can search for anything. It's Google. Search is so cool. And I will sh I'll show you all this in a minute. And then there's automatic albums. I mean, if you really don't want to do the tiny bit of work on making an album, if I wanted to just see all my pictures from Cuba, I could just go to the places and find Cuba, or I could search for Cuba. It automatically makes groupings by faces. That's the people, I'll show you that, and things. Those are what I call automatic albums. There's also what I call semi-automatic albums. So you just do one little thing like click a star on a picture and it automatically becomes part of the favorites album. I love that. I'm liking it more and more. <laughs> huh? And then live albums means you create an album, but then you check a little box that says, I want this album to automatically get pictures of certain people or certain places. I think maybe it's just people. And, and, things. and then for you, that's where Google just says, hey, we, we can do this neat thing like make a collage or remind you of five years ago. All right, so let's do, let's do a demo and I'm gonna start at the computer. Whoa. I think that so. needs to be changed. Give me just a <laughs> second here. <laughs> yeah, they can't see much at that zoomed yeah, in level. Oh, come on. They can do that. <laughs> uh -oh. um, Hang on just a sec. Hmm. That ain't it. So what I'm going to show you, and <laughs> Eventually, if, if, if we can't show the computer, I'll just go goes. straight to the device, that. but okay. So on a computer, the way you get to Google Photos is just going to a web page. There's no software to download, so you go to Photos, and look at that. I go there so often, photos.google.com. Or if you have this little grid, but it's not always there, if you have this little grid on your screen, you can go to photos that way. That's how I do it. Yeah, I always go to photos.google.com because that 
always works. And this is your stream of photos. Notice the menu at the left. Photos, albums, for you, sharing, and print store. So that's, that's the overview of Google Photos. So in Photos, notice that this is showing me pictures that were taken yesterday. And then if I go over to the right, a timeline appears and my photos are in order by date all the way back to 1890. You have a time machine. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> you, well, these obviously were scanned from old family albums. That's me as a baby. <laughs> that was just in you 1980, a bit. right? <laughs> that was only a few years ago. <laughs> um, all right, so how do you change the date? Let me show you. So back up here, a, a week or so, if you've been watching this show, you know that the last couple shows we've done have been about scanning <laughs> pictures from old albums. So uh, just a, a couple weeks ago, I scanned some photos from Christmas. So see these? And I can, this was Christmas 1994. So December 25, 1994. And you can just click on one photo and then the three dots and, oops, no. When you have just one photo, you look over in the info panel and the info panel, if it's not there, is this little eye right there. I, and then find the date. This, uh, this was scanned on May 2, but I can select the date and say 1994, 12, 25, and save. So it's not Christmas in July? <laughs> <laughs> So that has changed just that one picture, but now I have several here. I can click on the first one, shift click on the last one. Now all 11 are selected. Now it's the three dot menu, edit date and time. I can either shift dates and times and that's, that's for if your phone, I mean your camera, had a wrong date on it and you knew it was really three days before or three hours before, different time zone. Set one date and time, 94, 12, 25. Now, boom, they're gone from- Where'd they go? They're gone from May and they're back in 1994. and Christmas. Yeah, once there's f f so few per year, then it gets a bit, come on. And I could have searched for this too, but I wanted you to see it scrolling through. You have a lot of pictures. I do. I, I have, I do have a ton of pictures. So I guess I do have to search for 19. Have to search for it. Yeah. So I will search for DEC 1994 and it's best to use that. And I could even say 25 because See, that is tough. December 1994. Okay, so it shows me, I get a search results of one, but then if I click on this little down arrow, it show will show more. me everything. Sure not. Well, this is live, remember? <laughs> They're here. I know they are. I have to prove it. That's 1990. That's 1999. 
97. There they are. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> December 25, 1994. There are the, uh, the Christmas pictures. Okay. Wow. So that's date. But now I could also, how about this? I could search for Christmas. And not only will it get me those pictures from 1994, (laughs) but from every other time where it sees pictures that look like Christmas. And the word Christmas does not have to appear anywhere. I do not label these. I do not tag them. Google Photos knows what a Christmas tree looks like, and it understands that that must have been Christmas. Cool. Let's try another search. Beer. Oh, I like beer. (laughs) Once again, I did not tag any of these. It's just that Google sees this green bottle and understands that that is probably a beer bottle. Now here it saw the word B-E-E-R. So that's just a little bit about search. Now, let's go back and look at the automatic albums. So I've been just on photos this whole time. That's your photo library. Now I'm going to click on albums. And these at the top are what I refer to as automatic albums. So people. You don't have to do anything to get these. So if I want to see pictures of Jim's sister, Debbie. She might be here. (laughs) Hello, Debbie. (laughs) I just click on her title picture and it opens up the whole album where Google Photos has identified that face and found every picture that has that face in it. Now, it didn't know that she was Debbie. I added those words. If you scroll down away, and everybody that you have identified is on top. Now, these people are all just people whose face has been grouped together, not that it knows who they are. <laughs> there's a scarecrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, there's there. it does have some funny things. Yeah, the scarecrow. It's, it identifies that as a face. It if is I a click face. On it. <laughs> It is a face, and uh, oh, <laughs> there's a scarecrow. Yeah, for you. <laughs> there's it, it. There are a lot of funny faults, recogni- recognitions, but it generally does pretty good. And next, I want to show you. So things. Now these are just for fun, you know. I mean, if I had in mind, if I really wanted to look for mountains, I would just search for mountains. The perp, I don't really use these albums, but every once in a while, I just come in here and peruse. So I see pictures of uh, canoes. (laughs) Now those aren't canoes, those are kayaks, but. Near enough. And I can look through that and just see pictures that I've totally forgotten about. So this is just the way Google organizes things into virtual albums just for your browsing pleasure of remembering your photos. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to the iPad for two reasons. First, to make it clear that Google Photos, your library can be seen from any connected device. So this is my Google Photos account. You can tell by my little face up here. I call this the account button. And if I, as I scroll down, notice the dates. So I can go all the way back once again to 1890. And you see my great grandparents. Or I can scroll back up. Look how fast that is. Hundreds of years 
in a fraction of a second. The mobile devices have one extra way of making your photos accessible to you, and that's called memories, these bubbles here at the top. So six years ago, seven years ago, and once again, this is just for the fun of it. I can say, oh gee, what was I doing 10 years ago this week? That's what these are about. So 10 years ago this week, and it gives me a little instructions. Tap right to skip to the next photo, tap left to see the previous one, press and hold to pause. All I have to do is open it up and it will play me a little slideshow. These are all pictures from this week, 10 years ago. So it's dynamic. What next week, <laughs> next week, I'll have a different set of pictures in each year. And if it skips a year, that's because you don't have any pictures from this week in that year. Okay. What else did I want to show? Oh, and then favorites. Our favorite thing, right? <laughs> favorites. Let me go back. Now on the mobile devices, that same menu that was on the left on the computer is at the bottom. So I'm just at my photo library. If I go to albums, now I'm at albums. There's my favorites. Oh yeah, my favorite cook, <laughs> my favorite mountains. Now, how did these pictures get in there? If I go to my photos and I say that this, this photo is one of my favorites, I just tap that little star. It turns solid and now that picture is in my favorites album. Vice versa. If I decide, oh, nope, I didn't mean that, you just tap the star again to unstar it, and now that photo is not in your favorites. All right. I think we're going to end up a little long today, aren't we? <laughs> uh, uh, hmm. So next, oh, there's a slide. Okay. So that's it for... Bringing your photos to life, you know, that is what Google wants you, wants you to remember your photos, wants to bring a smile to your face. So they give you these things that bring your photos to life. Editing. If you like your photo, you want to make it look even better and you can do that on any device. Crop and filters are the two that you will always use, but then there's lots, lots more. So let me... That'll be a whole show. I know, and, and it should be. I, I almost did that for, the, for today, <laughs> is make it a whole show on editing. Uh, so yeah, I, th I think, and we have lots of videos on it, but so two points. Number one, there's a lot of tools. Let me, let me just show you. Yeah, I got to show you one thing. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm on my Samsung phone. So this is an Android. This is an Android. Just to show you, my, my photos are accessible to me from any connected device. So there's Google Photos. And I just go to Photos, and I'm at the top, and this should look familiar. We have the memories, and you can scroll through. Now, if I find a picture, let's this one. We have gorgeous flowers here, and looks like that lighting could be a little bit brighter. All right. Now, I already edited this one, so I have to undo it so I can show you <laughs> what I did. All right. So there's my picture. These are gorgeous flowers, but this photo doesn't look so gorgeous. This is the edit button right here. Edit. And then the first thing is filters. You can just tap on these different filters and see if you like one. If you do, save it. If you don't, go back to original. And I saw several there that I really did like, but I want to show you 
In fact, that one's really good. I'm going to leave it at Palma. That brightened it up, made the flowers more pink. Then I'm going to crop it to get closer to the flowers. And now I just want to show you. So that's filters, that's crop. Those are pretty self-explanatory. What's this one? This is everything else. So if I had taken that and my exposure wasn't good, here's where I can change the exposure just by dragging that little slider up or down. Here's where I can change the contrast. So if you want to fine tune your pictures, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Vignette is one of my favorites. So under light at the bottom, vignette and it See the black that's going around the edge there? Now I'm done with lighting. I tap that little up arrow. Color, same thing. Down arrow exposes all the different options for color. Saturation makes all the colors brighter. But what if I just wanted the sky bluer? At the bottom, there's deep blue. So now the sky is bluer without adding more color to the rest of it. Up arrow and save. Now on the Android and only on the Android, you can also add text with this little, this one is called the markup tool. You can highlight, you can just draw, or you can type text. Flowers. <laughs> and then once you've typed it, you can move it around, you can make it bigger. We are in La Florida. Yes, and done. And once you add text, you're saving a copy. Okay, so that's editing. Next slide. Okay. So this is the third part of the Google Photos mission statement. So that you can save and share what matters. Now, we haven't talked, we haven't done sharing specifically, but best way to share, I think, is with making an album and then you share the album. You can also just share photos one-on-one, -on -one, like in a text message. Or another reason to determine your best photos is to save a copy and that's what we have a video on. Hi this is Chris Gould with Geeks on Tour and this quick tutorial video is about downloading photos from Google Photos. Google Photos stores your entire library of photos in the cloud so you can see them with any connected device but most people also want a copy on their local computer or backup hard drive. But here's the deal. On Google Photos, it stores all of my photos. I have thousands and thousands and so many similar shots. I don't need to have all of those. I don't want to have all of those on my hard drive. I have a plan of making a monthly album of just my best shots and those albums I do download from the cloud in Google Photos to a backup hard drive on my computer. Let me show you how. First I want to show you my hard drive. It is a external hard drive just plugged into my computer and it has all sorts of stuff on it but here is one folder where I put all my backup of my pictures and I've been doing this for the whole time and if I show you 2018 for example you'll see that I have one file a zip file for each month January February March I also make a zip file for special occasions like a diving trip that we went on. Now let me show you my Google Photos. So here I am in Google Photos and as you know it's just one giant stream throughout the years of my 70, 80,000 pictures. Okay, So I make an album for each month. I click on albums and this is July 2019, so here is my album for June. I 
open that album and select the three dot menu and download all. That creates a zip file and then it stops and asks me where I want to store it. I want it on my Seagate backup drive in the pictures folder in the folder for 2019 and I like the album name 2019-06 June and it's a zip file. I click save. If yours did not ask you where, then I recommend that you change your browser settings. On Chrome, it's the three dots in the upper right, then settings, then advanced all the way at the bottom, then downloads. And notice I have this setting turned on to ask where to save each file before downloading. Otherwise, they all go to the same place. Your choice, but that's my recommendation. So now let me look at my hard drive. There is June, and I've already done January, March, but it's a zip file. Now, I think that's fine. This is my backup. I don't use my pictures on my computer. This is just, if something should happen to my Google Photos, I have my best photos for June. If you do want them visible on your hard drive, then you just right click and extract all. And it creates a folder with the same name as the zip file and all your photos are inside there. On a Mac, you do the same thing, just double click. Rather than right clicking, you double click and it will unzip unzip your file and there are all the photos. Last thing, what if you don't make albums? So you don't have an album for June, but you still want to make a zip file, a backup of all your June photos. You can just search for June 2019, then select, you click on the first one, and then you all the way down to the bottom and you shift click on the last one it tells me 245 pictures are selected those are all the ones from June 2019 and I click on download and it will do the exact same thing I just showed you with with an album so now you can rest easy knowing that all of your photos are in Google Photos but you also have your best for every month locally on your hard drive Drive. <laughs> drive. <laughs> yeah. So I hope you're understanding the, the paradigm shift that I'm talking about. You have to start understanding that your workplace for your photos is in the cloud. Now just your computer is the backup, not the other way around, the way we've been. At least that's the way Google Photos is designed. Now if people really, I know people who really want their folders. Google Photos is not the tool for you. I would recommend Dropbox. I think there's one more slide. Yeah, so in, in conclusion, you only have two jobs with Google Photos. One is to verify that all the photos and videos that you wanted uploaded got there. So even if you know that you turned the right settings on and you did the right commands, the only trust but verify, the only way I know that they got there is to look at another device besides the one that took the photos and see if they're there. So that's step one. That's job one. Job two is to identify what matters to you. You know, of all these thousands of photos, Mark the ones that are your important ones. You don't have to delete all the others. Just mark the good ones and put them in albums. We had a lot, we had several people submit questions beforehand. Um, I, I knew that this would happen, so I just have them written down. We will deal with these in our backstage you know, Zoom meeting, members only meeting afterwards, but it seems like there was one here that was really quick and easy. Can I use Google Photos with Snapfish? Yes, 
but that really doesn't have anything to do with Google Photos. It has to do with Snapfish. I have been to Snapfish recently and they have turned on the ability, I'm pretty sure it was, yeah, I'm, I know it was Snapfish. They have turned on the ability to see your Google Photos. You have to give permission. Uh, okay, so now we have some questions here. Okay. <clears throat> when you want to go uh, scroll up I oh, can't you scroll can't okay on that um, one. I can scroll up here sorry uh, Jolin asked if the computer can show you month at a time like the mobile devices can when you pinch the screen no <laughs> nope it shows you it shows you day at a time but have you realized that the mobile devices don't do the don't do the year at a glance like they used to? I love that feature. On the mobile devices, you can pinch the screen and the pictures get smaller until you get to a month. But if, like me, you have hundreds of pictures in one month, you still have to scroll and scroll and scroll before you get to the next month. The miniaturized view of a month is is gone. Um, what else? Remind me how to upload photos from the camera. Right now, my photos go to pictures folder on my computer. So meaning you are probably, this is Kathy, you are probably connecting your camera to the computer and then using the automatic features that just import from the camera to the computer. You know, that's okay. Then you can upload from the computer to Google Photos. But if you just say, just say no, <laughs> just say no to the automatic process that copies them to your computer, then you can go directly from camera to, to cloud. And Google fails to see people in some of my scanned photos. Can I add names? Maybe yes and maybe no. Want to do this one? Sure. Um, so... I'm on my Android, but this is this is the same in all. So let me wonder if they, if you swipe up on the phone and it says people, and it has already identified all three people, me, mom, and dad. So that doesn't, but what if I say, no, that wasn't dad, that was somebody else. You can edit. And if there was a face that wasn't identified, you can edit and you can assign that face to a person. But if Google Photos doesn't give you a face at all, then there's nothing you can do. You know, it has to see if I can find another. I mean, it, it pretty much knows everybody, so. Okay, so it doesn't know who these two are. I tap that. And no, I'm sorry. I tap the edit pencil. There. So these two faces, it doesn't know who they are. I can either say, well, forget about them, or I can assign them to a, to a name. So that's, that's the manual face tagging, but only if it has seen a face. And I just want to welcome Mark, Mark Dodsworth, if you see him there, and he's answered, he's answered a couple of questions. He is a fellow Google Photos a product expert with me. We get together once a year at, at Google headquarters and learn more about Google Photos, but not this year. Or mm. they haven't said yet, but I'm, it's not looking good. I'm expecting it to be canceled. It's usually in October or November. Right. Any other questions? Uh, we'll get to it. So John says, I hope they bring back that squeeze of you again. Yeah, it really I know. Is. I love that. I love that. And I don't know why they took it away. All right. Well, we invite you to sign up for our free newsletters, gatesontour.com news. Subscribe to this channel. Click the thumbs up. Click the bell to subscribe. Do all of those things, and you will not miss anything from the geeks. But join us. You really want to join the conversation. And don't forget, Mrs. Geek's Guide to Google Photos. She's still working on it. I'm working on the 2020 edition. I'm working hard. 
I've, right. I've missed my deadline, but yeah. I, it, it will come. So, so is everybody else. <laughs> the backstage pass will be an online Zoom meeting. If you have the link in your email, grab that. I'll switch around in just a couple of minutes. Click on the member login after logging in, and you can find it there. Become a member. Subscribe, Subscribe. and give us a thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs ups are good. We like that. Well, did you learn something? Now it's your turn. <laughs> we have questions for you. True or false? Folders and albums are the same thing. Nuh-uh. False, false, false. Google Photos stores your photos and videos in A, the cloud, B, your computer's hard drive, or C, your phone. Google Photos stores your photos and videos in the cloud. Unlimited for free. Which of the following is not an editing feature in Google Photos? A, auto, B, crop, C, red eye, D, exposure, or E, color tint? It has no red eye. You know, cameras today don't take photos with red eyes. <laughs> there might be a way, but yeah. True or false, just when you know Google Photo menu buttons by heart, they'll move to new positions. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely true. To identify the photos or videos that matter to you, A, download them, B, star them, or C, add to albums. Add to albums. Now you can star them, but that adds them to an album, so. <laughs> It is Google Photos job to upload all existing photos from your phone. It is your job to verify it by A, viewing your account on another device, B, calling Google, or C, asking Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I ask her. <laughs> viewing your account on another device. Okay, cool. All right, so Chris, what's the web page that lists all of our YouTube shows? Uh, geeksontour.com <laughs> and the menu item is YouTube show and the uh, web page that lists all the newsletters geeksontour.com blogs and news is the menu item all our 10 years worth of newsletters is in there and why do people pay us to join Geeks on Tour well we now have courses they're free courses no they're not those courses are not free oh but they are to members right <laughs> <laughs> At uh, geekswhoteach.com, <laughs> we're starting to make concise courses, and those are free to all members. And you get to ask us questions on the Q&A page. There, we, have we have over 100 of those short tutorial videos just on Google Photos. And one of the courses, the Zoom course that Chris made, is free to everyone right now. We did now. make that free to so all, yeah. So people are really using the Zoom technology. If you want to learn more about it, you can check out that course. <laughs> Jalen, thank you, because it's <laughs> worth it. That's why we join. Next time, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And we're Geeks on Tour, and we will see you next time. Wow, over an hour. Um, yeah, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody, all of our members in the backstage Zoom meeting, and we'll continue answering questions there. We'll be there in just a couple of minutes. Okay. That's it for this. And we'll see you later.